By now, we've all seen that you can use the Laravel defer helper to defer the execution of a simple task after the response has been sent to the browser. In this example, I have a button on screen which will navigate to a route and in the route handler we will simply return a view and we will defer a function in which we will sleep for two seconds before we log something. When we click the button, the browser will immediately show the response and after two seconds we will get our log. And while well, that's pretty neat, this had me wondering how it actually worked behind the scenes. And that's exactly what I will explain in this video. First, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And then let's dive in. Executing something after the response has been sent to the browser is actually nothing new in Laravel. Laravel already had this thing called terminable middleware for quite some time. And this allowed you to execute something after the response has been sent to the browser. To achieve this, you can add a terminate function to your middleware, which receives both the request and the response. And this terminate function will execute after the response has been sent to the browser. And as you might have figured out, this is exactly what defer uses behind the scenes. Laravel has added an invoke deferred callbacks middleware class to the core. And if you jump in, we can see that the terminate function will execute our deferred callbacks through a deferred callback collection. And this only gets invoked when the response has a status code that's lesser than 400 or when we pass in the always flag. When we call the defer helper, we will add our callback to a deferred callback collection instance. And this deferred callback collection instance holds all of our deferred callbacks. All right. So now we know how it gets executed on a high level. But I want to go one level deeper and see how this actually works in plain PHP. The thing that got me wondering was how Laravel could signal to the browser that the response has been sent in full and thus the browser should close the connection and stop loading. This requires us to dive deeper into how a response works in Laravel. Let's dig into our HTTP response class and here we can see that it inherits from a Symfony response. So let's dive deeper and we actually have to take a look at the send method. All right, we can see a couple of things happening here. The first thing we do is send the headers and the content to the client and then we check if the function fastCGI finish request exists and if it does, we will call it. And this is where the magic happens. When you're running PHP on a server, chances are quite high that you're running a server with the fast CGI protocol. The function fast CGI finish request will signal to the process that the response has been sent to the client. And this is how a client, in our previous example, a browser, knows that it can close the connection since everything has been sent over. However, the process that was responsible for handling the request will not terminate yet and you can do some light work afterwards. As an example, I created this vanilla PHP file to illustrate this. I'm echoing hello world and if we visit the script, we will see that it's instantly shown on screen. Now let's sleep for two seconds after we echoed hello world. And when we visit the page, we will see that the browser will still keep loading. And after two seconds, it stops loading and we see hello world. To mitigate this, we can add fast CGI finish request in between the echo statement and the sleep statement. And now when we refresh the page, we will see that the browser is no longer waiting for those two seconds. We can validate that the script has not terminated yet by writing something to a file as follows. Now when we refresh the page, after two seconds, we will see our log appear. The next question that naturally occurred was, what are the limitations of deferring tasks like this? And the answer is actually pretty simple. The process will respect the configuration values in your PHP FPMs php.ini configuration file. This means that if your max execution time is set to 10 seconds, you need to be able to serve the response and handle your deferred tasks within those 10 seconds as the timer doesn't reset. And the same goes for things like memory limit and actually all the other configurations in your php.ini file. If you need longer execution times or an entirely different configuration, 
queues are definitely still the way to go. My personal approach would still be to set up a queue worker for every project, but I might do lighter work like sending an email using the deferred helper from now on. And that concludes the video. If you like this content, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I hope you learned a thing or two and I will see you in the next one.